And our next speaker is Aviv Adler, who's going to talk about optimal policies for platooning, platooning and ride sharing. Uh, hi. Yeah. So as I said, I'm uh, Aviv Adler, and uh, this is joint work with uh, David Mikulescu and our advisor, Sir Taj Karaman. And uh, so just for uh, motivation, let's start with drafting. So drafting is a technique whereby uh, when a group travels together, they can take advantage of aerodynamic effects to save uh, energy or cost. So this is found in nature, in sports, and now thanks to automation, uh, we can begin applying it uh, reliably in shipping and so forth. And uh, this idea where grouping can save cost is not only applicable in drafting, but in, in even starker form in something like ride sharing, where you can pack more passengers into one car and as a result save quite a lot of cost. And um, so we're going to be taking a look at this problem from a sort of high level perspective. We're not going to worry about exactly how to control uh, each, each vehicle. We're going to look at how to control and dispatch these vehicles in order to maximize the uh, energy savings. So because of the variety of different ways in which drafting works and, and also the, the non-drafting applications of this, um, the amount of cost savings you get from grouping can vary wildly from application to application. So we wanted a model that captures that. So a, a parameter of our model is actually this function, the total energy function, which is just the uh, energy consumption of a group of K vehicles. And this is any, any function, any um, arbitrary function, and we can put it in our model. So, um, Typically, in, in a lot of applications, the larger the size of the platoon, the uh, greater the energy savings. But here's a case where this is actually not true in NASCAR, where, where two-person platooning is actually the norm. So, and, and an example of a simple F, uh, total energy function is affine total energy function, where you have a certain cost per vehicle and then just a cost per uh, platoon in addition to this. So we're going to look at a very simple uh, model of controlling and, and, and trying to dispatch optimally. It's the one station model. Uh, we have one station, one destination, and vehicles arrive randomly at this station according to a Poisson process, and they are indistinguishable from one another. And the station wants to send platoons to the destination uh, in such a way as to save energy, but in order to send large platoons, it has to keep vehicles back at the station and incur delays in the system. And so uh, our goal is to basically how, how to get the most energy savings for the least delay cost. Uh, so the station implements what's called a policy. This is just the rule that it uses to uh, dispatch the vehicles. And as I said, we want to find optimal policies and to characterize exactly how much energy you can save for how much delay. Um, so just, just to make this visual, if we have a policy pi, it's... Um, Profile is just the average delay it incurs and the average energy it uses uh, per uh, average per vehicle. And if we look at all uh, policies and we take the, the lower bound of, what, of their profiles, this is the Pareto optimal curve. This is the best you can do. Um, so, Oh, one, one more thing is that uh, if you want to have no delays, you can do this just by sending a vehicle as soon as it arrives at the station, and you have to pay uh, energy costs for, for a non-platooning vehicle. So that's uh, that point up there. So policies can be really wild and wacky things. I mean, you, and, and really anything goes. So for in this work, we, we focus on two types of policies. Um, the first is timetable policy, which is you just, it's literally just a schedule. Uh, the station doesn't even bother account keeping track of how many vehicles are there. It just, at this time, everybody goes. Okay, at that time, everybody goes. And uh, the intervals between platoon, leave, uh, pl the platoon departures go through a fixed cycle. And if that interval is always the same length, we call it fixed interval. Uh, and this is a much, much simpler uh, policy than, than general feedback policies. This is open loop. And the second kind we're going to look at is threshold mix, where you say, okay, I have a certain distribution of platoon sizes I want to send out. So every time a platoon leaves, I draw a size from this distribution, P1, P2, P3. Uh, and when, if I draw K, then the next platoon goes as soon as the K vehicle arrives at the station. 
And so this is actually going to turn out to be uh, optimal, optimal policy. So that's, that's why we're focusing on it. You can do all sorts of wacky things, but you can never beat this. So our general results, one is uh, when a platoon leaves, it should include everybody. Um, policies can be linearly mixed. We spend a few days uh, controlling using one policy, then a few days controlling using another policy and go back and forth. And as, as you would expect, the average delay and average energy usage for uh, the, the sort of mixed policy is a linear mixture of the profiles of the, the two policies you've been mixing. Uh, this is, this is uh, one of our main theorems. It's that if you know what the size distribution of the platoons that you send out are, this immediately determines how well your, um, your policy is going to perform. So we'll, we'll dig a little bit deeper into that later. But an easy corollary of this is that mixed threshold policies are optimal. Because you give me a, a policy pi, I look at what distribution of platoon sizes it will uh, generate. And I'll make a mixed, a mixed threshold policy, just use, plug that distribution right back in, and we get a policy with exactly the same performance, which means that mixed threshold policies are uh, optimal. OK, so it's sort of intuitively clear that if you knew what sizes the platoons were going to be, you would know how much energy you were going to use. But how do you show that delay is also the same? Well, uh, here we have a timeline uh, of the station under control of some policy, whatever it is. And the, the round things are vehicle arrivals. The lines are platoon departures. And the vehicles are color coded according to the first vehicle to arrive, second vehicle, third vehicle, and so forth. OK, so now we color this timeline according to how many vehicles happen to be at the station during these uh, periods. So the black is there's nobody there. Then red, there's one person waiting. Green, there's two per people waiting, et cetera. And there's a segment of each color between each platoon departure. That segment might be length zero, but we still consider it to, uh, to be there. And now what we do is we're going to take these segments and we're going to glue them together to make a uniform color timeline, these sort of weird stitched timelines. And the, the dashed line is just indicating a segment of zero. And each of these segments can end in uh, two ways, one with a, Vehicle, a new vehicle coming or one with a platoon going. But because uh, policy can only use information from the past and Poisson arrivals are memoryless, uh, these timelines, if you look at when vehicles arrive, that's also Poisson. So that, that's very handy. And if, it ends, if a segment ends with a new vehicle, it means that the platoon it corresponds to at least so if a segment where there's one person waiting ends with a new vehicle, it means the platoon left with at least two, two vehicles. And because we know what the platoon distribution is, we can compute this. So the probability that it leaves with at least two vehicles is P2 plus P3 plus P4, et cetera. And so if we take one of these sort of uh, stitched distributions and we look at it over a long period of time, T star, uh, there's going to be about T star vehicle arrivals in there because it's Poisson. Um, so there's going to be about T star over sigma k segments in total represented in there, which means that the average time you spend waiting with k vehicles per platoon is actually sigma k, which can be computed from the uh, size distribution. And this immediately allows you to compute uh, average delay over long periods of time, because how much delay are you accruing while you're waiting there? Well, it depends only on how many uh, people happen to be waiting at that time. So that's, that's how that theorem basically is proved. So this immediately tells us how to characterize optimal feedback policies. Uh, we already said they were mixed threshold policies, but mixed threshold policies are actually mixtures of hard threshold policies, uh, which are just as soon as the kth person comes, you go. And these have very easy to compute profiles. They have uh, delay k minus 1 over 2. They have average energy uses g, uh, total energy k over k. And so you plot them. and uh, you take the lower convex hull, and that's your Pareto optimal, um, uh, your Pareto optimal energy delay trade-off curve. And as a corollary, it's piecewise linear with the vertices at these sort of very predictable points. OK, so now we go to timetable policies, which uh, are chiefly of interest because of how simple they are. And um, so 
Uh, I'm going to have to uh, speed through this. I don't really have time to go into much depth about what we have, but uh, suppose we have a timetable policy with uh, interval lengths T1 through Tm that it cycles through. We can compute the expected delay and the expected uh, energy usage. And we really want is to find conditions where um, having one fixed interval is optimal among all of these policies and to compare them to feedback policies. And so for the next slide, uh, let epsilon t just be the expected energy uh, of a platoon from waiting there for, for t time and then sending whoever arrived. So then we get, um, we, we compare fixed interval to a policy with two intervals and we arrange for it to have the same delay. And if the fixed interval is better than two intervals in every case, then the fixed interval is always optimal. And this happens if uh, just a simple thing about using uh, less energy, which happens if and only if this function epsilon x over x is convex. But this is kind of hard to check. So instead, we have a sufficient condition, uh, which is much easier to check, which is that the total energy function divided by k is a convex sequence. So how does this stack up against uh, feedback policies? Well, uh, we can plot the two Pareto optimal curves for these two kinds of policies. And we can see that it's a little bit worse. And this is for the affine, uh, this is for the affine total energy function um, in, in the most pure form. And if we want to look at a percentage comparison, this, is, this chart is uh, how much worse the feedback policy, sorry, the uh, fixed interval timetable policy performs. Uh, under various regimes. The most extreme case is that you just pay one energy cost per platoon, but more reasonable cases include energy costs per vehicle included. And even with a very small energy cost uh, per additional vehicle, you, you get a uh, very, very close performance. So uh, fixed timetable policies perform quite close to feedback. And I don't really have time to get into this, but uh, there's, there's also an additional insight where feedback control gains its benefit mostly from, uh, mostly from getting one extra vehicle into a, a platoon for the same delay. So conclusions, I'm going to have to speed through this real fast, but uh, we formalize delay energy trade-off problems in platooning and ride sharing. We characterize the Pareto optimal policies, and we showed uh, some, some general theoretical results on what is optimal under these conditions. Uh, so dirty laundry, again, I'll have to speed through this. Um, so, so far, it's only the single station case, where, whereas we really want to optimize on the network of stations. Uh, we don't consider heterogeneous vehicles. Maybe one truck is carrying medicine, another one furniture. Delay is obviously not equivalent in that case. Uh, we, don't have, we don't consider what if uh, delay penalties are nonlinear, what if arrivals are non-Poisson, or what if the station has foreknowledge of when uh, additional vehicles will arrive. Uh, so yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. This, this image is just a, a, an Air Force test of drafting with uh, C-17 cargo planes. So questions? Uh, Dylan? Thank you very much for the work. Um, so one of the things I like about this is that I'm aware of people have thought about similar problems in sort of bundling for multi-robot task allocation problems where there's a notion of, uh, of sort of submodularity or synergistic tasks. Mm -hmm. And some of the things that you mentioned sort of have been known empirically, like this, this first result that you mentioned, which is you know, everyone has to leave in the platoon. That, if you do that, that's suboptimal. That sort of had been identified empirically. And your work actually proves this is, I think, lemma two or theorem two in the paper, which I think is um, Fantastic. So I think that's great. I think there's a broader applicability than just the drafting scenario you. that you looked at. Um, we're on the last se session on the last day, so if you'll indulge me, I'll set uh, the context for my question by just reading a short poem, if, if everyone can <laughs> do that. And the poem um, is written by uh, um, an English poet. Her name is Wendy Cope, and she's talking about uh, interacting with men. So if you're a woman, this might resonate. If you're a man, maybe you should pay attention. The, the poem is called Bloody Men. And it goes like this. Bloody men are like bloody buses. You wait about a year, and as soon as one approaches your stop, two or three others appear. You look at them flashing their indicators, offering you a ride. You're trying to read the destination, 
you haven't much time to decide. If you make a mistake, there's no turning back. Jump off and you'll stand there and gaze while the cars and taxis and lorries go by and the minutes, the hours, the days. So, so that's Wendy Cope's poem. And, um, and <laughs> So, so what I like about that is it emphasizes this idea of burstiness, right? You, you wait and wait and wait, and then not one bus, but you know, two or three arrive. Yeah. And so one thing I, I'm wondering about is you've looked at the expected delay mm -hmm. uh, in the Pareto front, but you could imagine something like actually saying, well, we're not just interested in the expected delay, but I, I actually don't want the buses to come all at once, even though that would be good for platooning. Mm -hmm. So maybe some constraints in the, in the Pareto space. And, and maybe it looks as if perhaps you can use distributional information to tell you something about the expected spacing between the buses or could you s say something about that oh yeah that's that's uh, that's that's a very promising direction for for further work um, especially with uh, something like oh sorry so especially with uh, non non poisson arrivals because uh, in, in reality you know not as, as you said they 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 arrive in in groups and actually uh, there was an extension that I was already thinking of, which is um, where they, the po arrivals are still Poisson, but sometimes multiple vehicles can arrive at once. And this still has the property of memorylessness, and probably these results will extend to that case. So you have Poisson arrivals, and then you have some distribution of exactly how many are arriving at every time, uh, every time they, they come by. So this is, this is uh, something that, that we're working on, actually. Cool. Thank you. Uh, yeah, possibly. We haven't we haven't thought of this yet, but that's uh, that's an excellent point. Um, so so maybe maybe if there's uh, everybody says where they're going, and then oh hey you know you've got three people going in the same direction, they form a platoon. This is this is actually uh, and and you could even think of intersections in the highway as almost like stations, and and apply and and apply this sort of reasoning to to that case as well. Okay, well, let's thank Avi for a great talk and Dylan for a great poem. <laughs>